Here at GenBrains, we create IDs and many other products that make developers' life better. My talk will be from the Big Data Tools plugin perspective. Now we will talk about data engineering and let's understand what the life of a data engineer is. Let's say we have some external source that produces big data. For example, it might be some e-commerce website with thousands of transactions every second. And next, all this data is transferred and extracted to external data storage, for example, HDFS or cloud storage like Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, and so on, or maybe just to hard drive to local file system. And the data engineer then looks at them, understands what kind of structure there is, and transforms them. And the transformation depends on the needs of a business and business logic. And finally, he loads it back into storage, where this data can be used, for example, for the needs of some business intelligence system, or maybe this is some ready-made report with graphs and conclusions, which can be viewed manually and shown to people who will make decisions uh, on this analytics. This procedure is called Extract Transform Load, or ETL for short. Many data engineers do these tasks full-time, all the time. You may also have a data science and machine learning team in your company, and then the picture will be much more complicated. Data engineers' tasks will include working with data scientists and deploying in production the models they have created. Still, in this demo, we will not touch a scenario like this. It's too complex. Uh, so, the most important and popular technology stacks at the moment are Hadoop, Spark, and Zeppelin. Scala and Python are used as a preferred programming language, and our Big Data Tools plugin is created to support all these technologies. Actually, Python support is a very young and experimental feature. The first version of the Big Data Tools featuring the Python support will be released this week. So you can try it, but keep in mind that this is still an experimental thing and we are going to improve Python support in later versions. So as you probably know, Hadoop is a set of uh, open source system and frameworks for working with big data. This is the very foundation. Everything is built of top of it. In particular, Hadoop implements the HDFS distribute file system. It's the most widely used file system. Spark is a big data framework that works with Hadoop and provides SQL-like API for querying data. SQL is generally a very convenient thing, and besides, it allows you to use skills of analysts who are used to work with SQL databases and understand SQL very well. Zeppelin is an interactive notebook that allows you to type code and visualize data quickly. It works with a bunch of popular technologies out of the box, including Spark and Hadoop. It is similar to the Jupyter Notebook that data scientists use, but it's much better for use with Spark. The primary programming language is Scala, but Python is supported too. It's kind of data engineering specificity. In Zeppelin, it's straightforward to type code and quickly, interactively communicate with the results of the execution. Let's create a new node with name Hello World and add a first paragraph. Set PySpark interpreter, example variable, and print it. Now we run all paragraphs. And that's all. And we instantly see the result of the execution. Moreover, the results of our work are straightforward to visualize. I will not waste your time to prepare data now. Instead, I will open the standard notebook with examples that come with Zeppelin. As you can see, the results of all calculations are instantly visualized on graphs and tables. It's very handy. So what's the catch? Zeppelin is not the best editor in the world. Let's see, can we move on to the definitions of the methods we are using? No. Can we see the documentation for these methods? No. Maybe some of them are deprecated and we misuse them. Can we find this? No, we can't. So what's about Python code completion? There is some kind of auto completion, but it is very elementary and rudimentary. This is because it only suggests symbols that it sees directly anywhere in the sources, but it cannot do a complete code analysis of the project and tell anything based on the context. 
The problem is that Python is rather complicated language, and Scala is much, much more insanely complicated language. And it is challenging to edit it just like that without any additional information. The dynamic nature of our code makes it the code unreadable without the help of uh, an IDE. Therefore, we really need code analysis. In short, Zeppelin is great interactive notebook, but it falls short in terms of code editing like in modern IDEs. To be honest, there's a wall infinity between Zeppelin and IDE. Okay, should we pick a good IDE? In this case, one of the JetBrains IDEs like IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate. Yes, they work excellent with Python, Scala, and other programming languages. But until recently, it was impossible to work with notebooks, look at data samples, and visualize data. What does the lack of visuals mean? That means that it's impossible to do practical exploratory data analysis inside the IDE, which is not very good. You don't want to switch to Zeppelin for this. And the last component here is the browser and maybe the console. We still need to check them to find the status of our Spark jobs, our Hadoop applications, and to download and upload files to external cloud storage like S3. So we are trapped in a copy-paste triangle. Imagine you wrote your code in Zeppelin, and now you need uh, some code analysis. Of course, you can copy it to the ID and check if it works. Unfortunately, this is not so easy. All your code will be read and you need to create a project, configure dependencies, write settings, and only then the ID will understand what is happening, more or less. This is not easy, and even if done correctly, the ID might still not match Zeppelin's environment. Of course, you can Google the documentation, you can copy-paste your function name in the browser and see everything. Of course, Hadoop, Spark, and other cloud uh, storages have uh, their web interfaces, and if you want, you can open them, copy paste the resource name, and see the content. But do you see the pattern here? Copy paste, copy paste, and this again is a very inconvenient because it is the source of constant attention shifts. And as a result, half of your working time you just wait for some next web interface to load. You press the reload button in the browser to find out when the job is done, again and again, and again and again, and the browser may end up with thousands of tabs. First, there is a loss of working time, and time is money, and secondly, it is very unpleasant and uncomfortable, it is exhausting to wait for every, every, every action. Uh, that is why we have made a special plugin that can be installed into different JetBrains IDs, this plugin allows you to go through the entire ETL data engineering process without leaving your favorite IDE. You don't have to copy paste anything anymore and do not have to switch focus anymore. The rest of this demo is intended to show how it looks like and you can make your life much easier using this plugin. Provided, of course, that your technologies are the Hadoop stacks, Spark and Zeppelin. That's our target technologies. To use this plugin, you need to install one of the supported JetBrains IDEs, for example, IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate Edition. You could also use PyCharm Professional or DataGrip, but the most complete feature set currently is available only inside IDEA Ultimate. The next step is to go to the settings window and install the Big Data Tools plugin, uh, if it is not installed already. As you can see, I have my plugin installed. And I will not set up production like Zeppelin, Hadoop, and Spark right now because this is a long and complicated task usually done by system engineers. But I will use my local virtual machine with Zeppelin and our test clusters with Hadoop and Spark to show you uh, all the features. So let's work through the entire ETL data engineering process and start with the extract phase. So first, we need to get the files from somewhere we support multiple file storages, uh, the local disk, HDFS, Amazon S3, Google Search, and so on. This is a key feature. We can open any of them right in the ID. Uh, look, there's a panel on the right, and we can add storage here. The easiest way is to add local storage. All we need is a local pass. 
With cloud storage, the story is more complicated because you need to specify authorization settings. I already have ready-made connections where everything is filled correctly. You can see how it works. Uh, for example, you can take a local file and upload it to Google Storage. In data engineering, we use several formats, at least the following, CSV, Avro, Parquet, and RC. Historically, it's all started with the CSV format. Uh, the good thing about the CSV is that it's very simple, and of course we support it. An essential part of exploratory data analysis is opening a file and seeing what is inside here. Uh, now we can open the CSV file without leaving the ID and see what is inside. Big Data Tools plugin does not load the entire file, but just a part of it, a sample. Heuristic determines the sample size, but in general for CSV, we load something around a thousand records. Big Data Tools plugin can display such files in two versions. First, in the form of classic text representation, the way it is in the file. And secondly, visually in the form of a table. Any column can sort the table by clicking on its heading. Individual cells can be copied to or save to the file, uh, etc. There are other popular data formats besides CSV. All these formats are displayed exactly like CSV. It's like an emulation where including the table view. The only difference between these formats uh, in the Explorer tool window are icons. Uh, the next step of our ETL process is transform and we will use Zeppelin for this. We don't have much time for big, big wife demo, so I'll try to show everything as quickly as possible. First of all, you can add Zeppelin connection and use URL with domain and port to connect it. We have extended connection settings where you can set up HTTP proxy and enable SSH tunneling, where you can set up SSH tunnel without using console. That is very good, very convenient but also you can uh, connect directly, of course. Sky is my, my host, I test connection and they uh, ready go. After you're connected to Zeppelin, you can create new notebooks, rename it, delete it, delete it to trash, um, remove them permanently, etc. Everything you need, it's much more convenient than to uh, manage them in browser. Okay, let's create a node and let's try to do something something basic like printing Hello World on the screen. Not so useful. Let's try to do some actual work. Imagine we have a big database with movies. It's our training data set and it is located on our local drive and it's located in our cloud. Let's add new local connection. It is on my local drive. And here we are. The file we need is movie titles and we see its structure, ID, year and movie title. So let's try to read our index file. Also, we can use all refactorings that we love, like refactoring rename. Let's rename twice. We are still able to get errors not only from code analysis and IDE, but from um, Zeppelin runtime. We can rename columns and render it much faster than in browser.
Also, if PySpark is not fast enough for you and you want to switch to Scala, you can always share the data between interpreters using function put. Actually, you can mix interpreters and write in Scala in the same notebook. I'll just paste my fast and complex Scala code from Buffer instead of typing it. And as you can see, it is a very long one process. It's not fast enough even when it is written in Scala. Also, if you use PyCharm, all the Scala code is displayed as a plain text, but you can fix it by using IntelliJ IDEA Automate with Scala plugin. It will fix everything. As you can see, this is IntelliJ IDEA. And there you have full Scala code analysis and navigation in the refactorings and other smart things too. Let's return to PyCharm. As you can see, you have all the things you have in PyCharm like advanced code formatting, And of course, why we use Zeppelin to draw interesting interactive charts? Let's see. And last but not least, you can add all your Spark and Hadoop instances inside the IDE and monitor your jobs and essential properties of these jobs. So, we finished the raw ETL process inside your favorite IDE without switching to a browser or console or anything else. That's it. Thank you for watching.